Next, we're going to learn about some variables in Haskell. And to do that, let's go ahead and delete what we have here, backspace. And we're going to print out this story. So go ahead and write out this story. Um, it's a very short story just to, to get us going. Dudley received 36 gifts for his birthday. 36 gifts, Dudley thought out loud. But last year, I had 37. Um, and then this is when we knew Dudley was a very spoiled child. And it's going to go from top to bottom when it prints. So it'll print this line first, then this line, next line, last line. And it'll always do that inside of this main equals do. So everything underneath it, it'll print in order from top to bottom. So let's save it with control S and head over to our WinGHCI. We're going to reload the file with the green button and run it with the red button. And you're going to see it prints out our story, right? Okay, so now let's add some variables to our story. So we can print out, for example, Dudley, Dudley, and Dudley, or we can just write Dudley once and substitute something like name in for it, a name variable. And so a variable is something that stores some data inside of it. And when we name a variable, so we can do let name and equal, and in our case, we're going to use Dudley. Okay, and so we this string Dudley is stored inside of this name variable. And variables have certain naming conventions. For now, we're going to say it has to start with a letter. Um, and it can include letters and numbers. So I, I can't really say one name. That's not legal. But I could say like name one. It can have letters and numbers and has to start with the letter. So we're going to use name for now. And for readability, I'm going to add an extra space here. And the computer will still read this from top to bottom. Okay, now we stored Dudley inside a name, but this doesn't do anything yet. We have to add it onto our strings in here, or the fancy words concatenate it. Um, so another way to write this put string ln is we could wrap parentheses around this entire string, and it'll still run the exact same way, right? So I could do this for each one, and actually I'm going to do that. Put parentheses around each one. So in Haskell, this will still work the exact same way. It'll still print each one. And let's make sure it does. So control S to save, reload, and rerun it just to make sure. And you can see here that it prints everything the exact same way. All I did was add some parentheses to make it um, a little clearer. And so now we want to replace, every time we see Dudley, we want to replace that with this name variable. So instead of saying Dudley received 36 gifts for his birthday, we're going to say, this. So we'll leave the space here. But before this string, we can use this name variable instead of Dudley. So we can say name plus plus, and then the string. So name plus plus received 36 gifts for his birthday. And every time we have Dudley, we can replace that with name plus plus. So down here, same thing. And we, I know we have it in the middle, we'll come back to that in a second. So we can get rid of this Dudley. And before the string, we can put name plus plus space. Okay, and this is called concatenation. We're saying the Dudley is name, so Dudley, and then attach that to this. Dudley, attach it to this. Now, what happens if Dudley's in the middle of a string, right? So this is a little different. We need to make this initial thing a string, and then this last bit a string, and then use our variable name. So to do that, I'm going to add a space here. Quote. So now you can see that this turned white and this is our first string. And then we're going to add a quote here and a space. So you can see now this is our second string. So first, first string and then the quote stop. It stops the first string. This will be our variable. So we're going to do plus plus name plus plus. And then this is the last part of the string that we want. So name takes the place of Dudley, the string Dudley, in all three of these instances. And if we save that with control S and head back over to our WinGHCI, first let's clear it. So edit, clear screen, or control S for the shortcut. Then we're going to click reload, and we'll click run. And you're going to see that it still works, right? So Dudley received 36 gifts. 36 gifts Dudley thought. And Dudley was a very spoiled child. So every time we had name, it's replaced with Dudley. And let's take one more look. So name, name, 
in name, and this is called string concatenation, right? And it still prints out Dudley in all those spots where we have name. So that's the first part of variables. Uh, we'll talk about the second part next. So before we continue with variables, let's talk about commenting out code. In Haskell, when you comment out code, uh, that means the computer will just ignore it. It's for us only to see, and the computer will just skip right by it. So we want to do that with everything we have so far, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So to comment that out, you can do hyphen hyphen, and then space. Or you'll notice you don't have to add the space, but I like to. So hyphen hyphen. And if a quick shortcut for VS Code, you can use Alt and click multiple cursors at once out in front, and hyphen, hyphen. And you've commented out all the code, right? So now if we were to add like a put string ln high and save it, all of this code that's green here won't run. The only thing that'll run is this. So let's try that. Save WinGHCI. And we're going to clear it with Control S. And then we're going to reload, and we're going to run it. And you'll notice it only prints high. It doesn't print anything else because, again, once you comment out something, that's only for us to see. And to make the comment, you add these two hyphens before the line that you want to comment out. And we're going to use this again in just a minute, so we don't want to lose it. So we just comment it out, and then when we need it, we'll comment it back in, okay? So let's continue. Our end goal is to replace this 36 with a variable. Um, and the same way we replaced Dudley with name, we want to replace uh, <clears throat> 36 with a variable. But the thing is, we can't just print a number. So, for example, we can't just do put string ln 36. Haskell won't like that. If I save it and I go to WinGHCI and reload, it's going to throw an error. And all this red is the error, right? And it's saying, hey, I can't actually run your module. It'll say failed, no modules loaded. And it's going to give this thing about no instance arising for the literal 36. All this is saying is that, hey, you tried to print a number with put string ln, and it can't do that. Now, you could say print 36 and save it. So anything that's not inside these quotes, and you want to print it to the console, use print. If it's inside of quotes, use put string ln. That's the moral of the story. So put string ln prints out words and things inside of quotes, and print will print anything else. So let's go to here, reload, and now it works, right? So we're put string ln high, and we print 36, and it works. Um, so what happens if we want to add 36 as a variable, right? Into we, we need put string ln and we need 36 as a number um, or variable, uh, but we can't just print it. So we're going to do our quotes like we did down here. Um, we're going to use quotes up here and to print out a number with put string ln, we can use show and now I can say 36. So show means, hey, I know that this 36 is a number, but I want to print it as a word anyways. So we save it, control S, go back to WinGHCI, reload, it says OK, run it, and you'll notice it still prints out high and 36. So again, it's because we said, hey, this is a number, but we want to show it as a string. And then put string ln is like, ah, oh, okay, I can show that as a string. So it does. Um, so on to the next thing. Now we're ready to replace our 36 down here with a variable. So first off, we need to uncomment all this code. And to do that, we can either individually erase the comments. So just backspace the comments out. Or you can do this all at once by highlighting it. And you're going to push Control and forward slash, or it's the question mark key, right? So control question mark key, and it'll unquote everything at once. And we want to get rid of these put string lines up top that we had, backspace. I'm just going to save that, make sure it's working. So save. I just want to make sure it's working, so I'm going to clear this, reload, and run it. Okay, so we still have what we originally had with Dudley being replaced by the name variable. And now we want to replace 36 with the with a number variable. So we can say let, and we're going to call this number of gifts. Okay? And you're going to notice the commenting here. 
where I use a capital letter for each new word. Um, that's something called camel case, and it's kind of the convention in Haskell. So when you're writing a variable name, you start with num was my first kind of word, and then of is the second word. So I start of, oops, I start of with a capital O, and then gifts is my last word. I started with a capital G. So if I want a three word variable name, I just kind of use a camel case and capitalize each word that's not the first word. All right, so number of gifts equals 36. And I want to replace this everywhere inside of here. So instead of saying 36, I want to say name plus plus received plus plus num of gifts plus plus gifts for his birthday. Um, and to, to do that, remember, we can't just print 36. We have to show it. So let's get rid of the 36, right? And received will be its own word. And then gifts for his birthday will be its own string. So we have Dudley plus plus received. And then we want to add 36 in here. And then the last string is gifts for his birthday. So we can do plus plus. And if we just try and do num of gifts and we try and save that and run it, it's not going to work, right? Because we talked about how that print st put string ln doesn't like numbers. Um, so we need to make this say, hey, this is definitely, we want to show this as a string. So we can say show, like we did earlier. So we can say show the number of gifts. And it'll be like, okay, that, that'll be shown as a string. And then it'll concatenate it to everything else. So we can do the same thing down here, right? Um, instead of 36 gifts, we can do num of gifts plus plus, right? But what did I forget? What we just said, we need to show that 36. So we need to say, hey, this is definitely a string. Show that, show that number is a string. And now when we save it, let's just go over it one more time. So Dudley plus plus string, right? These are both strings. This variable is a string, Dudley. And then number of gifts is a number, but if we say we want to show it, it'll make it a string for us. And then this is a string. Same thing down here. Show makes number of gifts a string. String. Name is a string. It's Dudley and string. So again, make sure you saved it. And then we're going to go over to our WinGHCI. I'm going to clear it. Reload. And it says, OK, one module loaded. And then we can print it, evaluate it. And you'll see it still works just like it did before. Dudley received 36 gifts for his birthday. And you'll notice now that this 36, it still looks the same, but instead of writing actually writing 36, we replace it with number of gifts. And this might come in handy. Let's say we have a bunch of lines that we want to print, right? And we don't want to print, um, maybe we replace a, instead of replacing a word or a number, we replace a whole sentence with one variable name. That'll save us a lot of time, so we don't have to write the whole sentence every time. We can just add the variable in. Um, so that's the beginning of variables. Now let's talk a little bit about types. One more thing about variables before we move to types, and that would be once you store Dudley inside of the name variable, so once name is set to Dudley, you can never reassign name. So you can't just come down here and say something like let name equals Fred. It doesn't work. Haskell won't like it, and it'll complain. It'll say, hey, you already said name's Dudley. Name can't be Fred. Name is always Dudley. So that's nice in understanding that when we see name, it's always going to be Dudley, and we don't have to worry about if something changed it somewhere in our program to Fred. It's always going to be Dudley. And number of gifts, once 36 is assigned to number of gifts, then number of gifts is always 36. We can't change that. So now on to types.